how many months has Custom Shop now been yours? Uh, six. Six. And how's that been? Good. I mean, it's been, you know, right off the bat, it was probably one of the most stressful things I think I've ever done. You know, when we first took over, you know, I had all my projections when I had made the business purchase and all that stuff, ran all the numbers. And I was like, okay, this is where we need to be in order to make X amount of money and pay back investors X amount of money, including myself and whatnot, to be able to make money. And it's very different when and this is something that resonated with me when you told me but it's very different when it's your livelihood you yeah know? um not only that when it's your ass on the fucking line if shit hits the fan not just for you financially but for the livelihood of everyone that works for you mm -hmm. which is a big deal for me you know because like i have people that have kids that work for me so you know the restaurant being successful is not just about me my name my ego whatever you want to say or like oh we're the best restaurant in charlotte blah 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 all that bullshit it has you nothing are. To, you i mean are yes i know are. i can say that strongly, go on, say it, yeah. but you know i'll toot my own horn later that's fine but yeah i'll toot it for you the competition is not too aggressive there anyways but still coming from this city it's like mm. very different but um cumberbatch <laughs> <laughs> You had this thing where you can't remember the because name it's not of anything. Memorable. No, okay, but the here's the thing. But you don't remember the exact name of anything, but you remember the name that you choose to deem it every single time, which is really strange to me. What, like, what, what is Cumberbatch actually? Cumberbatch is um, it's actually a restaurant in Crunkleton. Bar called Crunkleton. Yeah. <laughs> now he remembers. <laughs> yeah. That's the best. Well, part. I just don't want to give him the credit of me saying that. Yeah, she was, but you know what's sad is that like I, we we uh, when Chris and I got there, Andres picked us up and we're like, we're just going to go to dinner or whatever. Well, he was like, what's open on Monday and like <clears throat> North Carolina? Not a lot. Yeah. So anyways, limited options. So we just, and we went to this place, but it looked super dope when you walk in. I mean, it is dope. Mm, man, it's dope. Woof. This is really fucking bad. Chicken piccata, baby. The chicken piccata was almost inedible. Yeah. I mean, everything was almost inedible. Yeah. The cocktails and were good. The cocktails were good. The bar, like... The back bar was fucking amazing. So, yeah. anyways, but sorry, just what were you saying? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I mean, so a lot of stress, a lot of fear. I mean, fear would be the biggest thing, right? So, like, fear driven the entire time. Like, you know, fear is good. Like, <clears throat> we had a leak for two months that I could not figure out for the life of me where the leak was. I was like, the walls are getting destroyed. All these bad things are happening. And it was just like, the bane of my existence couldn't sleep. We finally got the leak fixed and it's like, okay. But that leak for me was just such a fear driven thing where I was like, okay, we just spent X amount of money buying this restaurant. Now we're going to have to spend X amount of money trying to solve this leak and everything else involved in it before even doing the renovation. So right. I was like, this is nuts, you know? And for me at that point, it's just like fear consuming stress. And like, it's like the fear of the unknown, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's like if something breaks, I don't give a shit about it. It's like, okay, we'll get it fixed. Like, it sucks. It's going to cost money, but it's business. Like, it is what it part, is. Part of the thing. But the biggest thing that was driving my fear was that I had ran all these numbers. And then my first two weeks at the restaurant, we broke maybe 16000 in a week, you know? And um, that wouldn't cut it. Let's just put it that way. That wouldn't even cut it to, like, pay me what I needed to make in order to, like, pay my bills at that time, you know? Um, and I was not in a position to not pay myself a certain amount of money because I had already set myself up to live my life a certain way. So for me, that was like extremely fearful and, you know, just obsessing over the numbers, obsessing over open table, obsessing over the cover counts, the check average, all these things that when you're working for someone else who's paying all the bills, I mean, it's cool to know what it means and to be familiar with it, but it doesn't really matter. <sighs> but when it's your life, it matters. Yeah. And like, so the respect I have now for anybody that owns their own restaurant and operates their own restaurant is tenfold compared to what it used to be, you know? And that goes for people that I've worked very dearly with where, you know, big things matter like everything. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, have, I don't have to fucking tell you, you know this, but still. So for me, that was the biggest thing was like grasping that and understanding that and then, you know, people would tell me, friends of mine would be like, why do you obsess so much about the cover count? I'm like, because it's... What mm -hmm. the fuck do you mean? Why do I obsess over it? Because mm -hmm. if we're only doing 20 covers on a Tuesday, we're fucked. <laughs> There's no sugarcoating that. Like, we can't afford to continue to stay open. And that's what we were doing. And that was scary to me because 
I made the purchase. I did all these things. And I was like, cool. I made a huge mistake. Mm. It was like milk was a bad choice. Mm. It's pretty much how I felt for like two months. Mm. And then I got better. I think like um, when I look back at the seven years that we've been doing this, the difference between me now and me back then was it kind of like sounds like what you're saying, which is I obsessed over everything. Right. And it and it drove to some days like drove me fucking mad. And I'm, I feel terrible for the people that were around me every day because it was it, it was a dreadful version of me. But it was it was, you know, it's life. Yeah. It was very difficult to deal with. And on top of that, hey, I know you have all these other things to worry about. but You also have to put out great food, <laughs> by the way. I know you have to you have to also do this yeah. and you also have to manage people. And you yeah. also have to like order fish. Mm-hmm. and order produce mm-hmm. and order things and like operate the restaurant and have enough people to do the job right um now like it always seems like the world is burning down but like i've been here before <laughs> Thank you.